very much, Stephen, and, and thank you for turning out in what, what, after all, is the graveyard slot today. Um, I, I was asked when um, uh, invited by the Stock Exchange to come here, did I mind if I had the graveyard slot? I said not at all, because I'll be talking about life and death. <laughs> and we're all pretty bothered, it seems to me, by life and death, and, th and that will illuminate, I think, what we're saying when I say that I'm CEO of Inis Group, and we're the UK leaders in connected healthcare IT. So that's, that's our starting point. As a picture of me, so you can just compare whether or not it looks uh, uh, in any way like me. This is Tufty Chris, by the way, with the hair at the, at the top. Let's talk a little bit about the business. We were formed in 1987 by two GPs. Unlike most GPs, they, they had a degree of self-awareness. Apologies to any GPs in the room. Uh, the first thing that they were aware of was that they couldn't read each other's handwriting. Uh, the second thing that they were aware of was that, in fact, they didn't know everything. Okay, so they thought it would be a great idea uh, to avoid killing people and hopefully to make them better. If, first of all, they put things in this computer stuff so that they wouldn't be worried about reading and writing. And secondly, uh, that they could then start to digitise information. So they were the very first people to go and, and see Oxford University Press and put the little handbooks that they did at that time that went in the house man or host woman's coat uh, and they went round the, the, the clinical uh, director and the surgical uh, handbooks. Uh, so they actually had their practice receptionist typing that out and putting it into the system. That's how Enis began in, uh, in a North Yorkshire town, uh, very near to Heartbeat Territory, uh, Egton Medical Information Systems, Enis as it now is. Um, fast forward a little bit, we did a management buyout uh, in 2009. Uh, the uh, two doctors wanted to step a little bit back, but they also wanted to keep the, the management team uh, engaged. 20 uh, of us at that stage stepped forward a little bit uh, and, and acquired some shares. And then we IPO'd in 2010. Uh, the IPO was for several reasons, but the principal reason was that we hold literally millions, I'll tell you how many millions shortly, of patient records. We wanted to be a public company so we'd be seen to be in public. That we would be seen to have the seriousness of not just being a few blokes and ladies from <coughs> Yorkshire who've got all our records tucked away in their cellar. Okay? So, from that point of view then, we uh, IPO'd, IPO'd at three pounds, and we're now, as I like to describe it, uniquely ubiquitous in healthcare. So we have positions in primary and community care, including GPs, child, community, properly so-called, and mental health. Uh, we have a strong position in community pharmacy, and we also have a strong position in specialist and secondary care. Think of it as a, a virtuous healthcare circle. If we look then at primary care, we have a market uh, share of over 50%. In uh, broad terms, that's 53%. I like to suggest if I throw a brick out of the window, then there's one in two chance of somebody being hit and going to one of our GP surgeries. That's 40 million patient records that sit in our hosted uh, environment. These are hosted solutions. We, we, we've moved over the past two to three years, almost all of our practices in England, into a hosted environment. What's the benefit of that? Financially to us, that moves them from £10,000 per practice to £13,000 per practice per year. That's between four and four and a half thousand pounds at four and four and a half thousand practices, ladies and gentlemen. So I'll just let you do the maths on that uplift at 3,000 times 4,000. Um, it's worth it, therefore, for us in terms of growth and financial aspects, but there's a much better price than that. I told you I was going to talk about life and death. That means that that data comes out of the GP's practices, out of their servers, and into the cloud. Other people ask me where the cloud is. It's in my cellar. Okay? It's a big cellar, by the way. It's a high-tech cellar, and it's a highly secure cellar directly plugged into the NHS secure network. But that data is there in our business so that we can then take it out into other parts of healthcare. So moving that data around, which is the richest and deepest source of, of data, is a key part of our strategy looking forward. This software is not paid for by the GP. I always get a bit of a slight gasp here. What? This software is not paid for by the GP. It's paid for directly by the NHS, 
as part of a contract that we negotiate every four to six years. So essentially from that point of view, we go through a contract re-procurement and then we worry a little bit less about it for the next four to six years. When's the last one? Last March, ladies and gentlemen. Last March we renegotiated the contract for that four to six year period. Has got lots of good things in it from a financial point of view. Uh, large amounts of it are paid in advance. There's an inflation kicker. And as you will gather, we also have our 10 to 13K uh, movement as folks move from the old system, the land system, through into the hosted system. And there's also what we call more for more. If you want to know more about more for more, do visit me on stand 37 uh, after this presentation and I'll happily tell you about that. So there's growth within that area and it's inside a hosted environment and it's under a single contract for which we get £45 million pounds a year. So it's high recurring business, 75% of our business is signed up before we go in on January the 1st. So I've talked a little bit about the growth in there, the move from the older system into the newer system. Uh, development and, and uh, volumetrics I've mentioned on there were being asked increasingly to write additional software uh, and also to encourage our users to use more of the software, typically for things that the NHS wants to be pushed forward, things like the electronic prescribing service, uh, things like the GP to GP system, transferring records electronically when you move uh, GPs. And there's further growth in hosting across Scotland, across Wales, and across Northern Ireland as well. So our UK base will then be completely moving in the next year to 18 months across into the fully hosted environment. So that's the primary care space. Growing right next to that is child, community, and mental health. This is exactly the same product that we use in primary care, but with some configurations. So there's a common code base and economies of scale. This is a market that's opened up um, in the last year or so, because effectively we had a national programme for IT, a governmental programme, that was intended to drive out the old uh, suppliers, the old so-called legacy suppliers. You may have read about that. This was the billion pound uh, process, which was going to be one ring to bind them all, the Lord of the Rings approach to healthcare. Um, astoundingly, because it didn't engage with uh, clinicians, because it didn't look at what was there before, it didn't succeed. And therefore now, real politic has emerged in that market, and those contracts are coming up for renewal. Do we think we'll get 50% of those new contracts, 100% of those new contracts? Absolutely not, because we think that inertia, uh, inertia is actually a very powerful thing. We think it's a powerful thing, which will mean a lot of people will stay where they are. But we do think by the end of next year, we'll have 10% of that market. It's a market worth 60 to 80 million, we think therefore we'll have an, another 6 to 8 million pounds recurring revenue from which we can grow uh, and which we can take forward out on an organic basis. It's locally funded again by the NHS uh, and again as you can see the growth will be in 2014 and 2015 as these former uh, contracts start to move forward. Patient health and well-being, we also have uh, patient.co.uk, many of you may have used that, I know 18 million people do uh, every month and they also look at uh, 30 million pages as they go each month. Why is that important to us? There's a little bit of revenue from uh, ethical advertising but mainly it pulls people in, into what are called patient transactional services. This is things like booking an appointment online, uh, booking a repeat prescription online and looking at some of the care record which is part of the government's educational approach and also, dare I say it, their uh, pick your own strawberries approach. You can get the public to do a number of these things, as with an ATM, as with the uh, checkout in Tesco's, then you'll be able to move forward and have economies uh, and also, as we said, educate the public. So that hopefully, instead of having to make them better, they don't get ill in the first place. So patient.co.uk has a funding stream now through that contract I mentioned that we've renegotiated in March. And we move on next into community pharmacy. This is your high street pharmacies. We have a 35% market share in community pharmacy, which we've grown organically since 20% back in 2010 when we IPO'd. Is there more to come? Absolutely. There's essentially another 15% in the market uh, from organic growth into the so-called independence. Uh, this is things like Roland's Pharmacy, etc., with 500 shops, and they're quite big 
independent. And we also have another 50% of the market to address for the new product that we're developing, people like Lloyd's, Boots, and Supergo. Those are the areas where, again, there's growth in that marketplace. These are locally funded, effectively paid for by the pharmacists, uh, and or by pharmaceutical wholesalers. Still NHS driven because, of course, it comes from uh, prescription payments, and that's where the major income comes from. And as I mentioned, a <coughs> great driver there is into the supermarkets themselves. <coughs> Next, as bless you. Next, the specialist care. Uh, we have a growing presence in this area using our primary care and our community product as a basis, for example, for diabetic care, asthmatic care, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. That's what we mean by specialist. And we're also 83% of uh, English uh, provisions of diabetic uh, retinopathy screening is done by our systems. So again, large dominant market share within that space. That's locally funded, again, by the NHS, typically as part of its uh, community engagement. And there's growth, I'm afraid, as those long-term conditions start to increase. Remember, one in three of us, irrespective of age, is estimated to either suffer from type 2 diabetes or incipient type 2 diabetes. I know looking around the room, most of you look as though you run about a lot and you're not in any way heavy. I, of course, don't fall into that category, so I'm particularly interested in long-term conditions. And into secondary care, this is hospitals to you and, you and I. We have a leading product in A&E with 20% of the market, in hospital pharmacy with 30% of the market, and a strong product within the patient administration system, as well as 50 other products that do smaller things within that, that market, which is highly fragmented. Things like total parenteral nutrition being fed through a tube, for example. We do those sorts of things as well. These are hosted solutions, or they can be standalone. It's funded again by the, the NHS, uh, and there's growth as that becomes former national programs uh, contracts that I mentioned before, the one that had uh, not engaged with clinicians, wasted billions, those are now starting to be re-let, and those contracts are starting to be, to be won. Give you an idea of uh, the shape of that sort of uh, area and how this starts to pull things together. We announced on Monday of this week that Gibraltar was taking uh, one of our systems across the whole of its healthcare economy. So what does that mean? It means in healthcare terms, the primary care, out of hours, community child mental health, and the hospital space, together with the Gibraltar-based version of patient over the UK, will be produced specifically by us for that island. Um, what does it mean financially? In the first 18 months, it's 3.5 million pounds, but the contract as a whole, it's 11 and a quarter million pounds. So connected health care is a good thing for health, and it's a good thing in terms of an investment uh, opportunity. Where does most of our uh, business come from in terms of revenue? <coughs> Split down predominantly from primary and community care. You'll see in the red segment, community pharmacy, and then uh, uh, another quite large segment and growing segment in secondary and specialist. For those of you who don't have a brilliant eyesight, I'm going to give you one or two of the highlights, and you will find this uh, announcement obviously on the Stock Exchange's website, and a more detailed version from our half-year results uh, it is available as, as well. Uh, talking through those then, I'm sorry, talking through those then as well, revenue, uh, nice and, and strong in relation to uh, our turnover for the half year, remember. Uh, so £66 million, pounds, that's up 41%. Do uh, bear in mind that that's taken into account some acquisitions we made at the back of last year, but the underlying uh, revenue is still up 10%. Uh, so recurring revenue strong at 49.9 million. Uh, we expect that to remain at around 75% in terms of recurring. Adjusted group operating profit 14.6. Again, we expect, expect a strong half there. Again, it was up 27% taking into account the acquisitions, but stripping those out still up 10%, so double digit again. The cash generated from operations at 27 million is strong. We have a little bit of a front. Uh, front waiting uh, because the uh, NHS's financial year uh, starts in April, uh, but that was up 42% on the year before, and the net debt down to 100,000 from 13 million at the beginning of the year. Lots of money coming into the business, being spun off from the business, the 
been used to pay down that debt, a little bit of debt we took for, for those acquisitions. Adjusted EPS, 17.3%, up 16%, and then, yes, an interim dividend of 9.2 pence, uh, which is up 15%. And you'll see that we try on a progressive dividend policy to keep the EPS and keep the dividend together. This is a picture of connected care and the way in which we help with connected care. What I want really to, to talk you through is the way in which we can uh, push together uh, all of our systems so that you move from primary care into secondary care, into community, and across into community pharmacy. Your information follows you. You don't have people asking you the same thing time and time again, and you don't have the risk of them operating on the wrong bit because they didn't know it was you. Again, if you want to come to Stand 37, I'll tell you about my cataract and my uh, eye detachment on afterwards. Um, it was a horrible story which involved me wandering into one hospital on an October night with a blue cross of the wrong eye and a note written in handwriting. And you know, I thought to myself, what could possibly go wrong? Well, it did. They got my name wrong. They put me in the wrong uh, hospital ward. They sent me up to ward. When I came back, I woke up in a uh, corridor. Uh, nice to wake up in the corridor with your head bolted down because you can't move it. The back, you know those theatre gowns with the back open, as I like to remark, my buttocks wafting in the breeze. Um, this was deeply, deeply unpleasant. And when I said to them, uh, why am I not in the ward? They said, oh, we didn't think you'd be coming back from theatre. That's a great feeling. <laughs> Joined up care stops that happening. It, it transfers information around the system and it allows you to look at this sort of information being pulled together. So what it effectively says is that EMIS Group, as well as providing financial strength, also gives you access to over 5,000 GP surgeries, 4,700 high street pharmacies, 70% of hospital <coughs> trusts, 83% of diabetic retinopathy patients and finally 40 million patient records. Thank you very much.